these are all the components that we discussed on yesterday right so do you have any questions or do you have any questions on any of the topic that we discussed uh, till yesterday no no yeah, fine then. So today we can start with uh, the next topic, so which is uh, the continuous flows. Okay, so we will see about uh, the continuous flows processing uh, using the ab initio components. How we can do the continuous flows processing with the help of the ab initio components. So to start with, right? So we will uh, see the difference between the batch and the real time data processing. Okay, batch versus real time data processing. So what is the difference between the batch processing and the real time data processing? Batch is the uh, if we we are scheduling something and it will run at that time only only once and real exactly. time is the continuous thing. Okay, that's right. That's right. Perfect. So batch processing. So it is. Uh, so we do the processing at only once. Right. So processing happens uh, at only once. So it is more of an end of the day processing. Right, so we will wait for uh, the data to get accumulated till the end of the day, and we will do the processing at the end of the day. If it is real-time data processing, it is more of a continuous data processing. Right, continuous data processing. When we, when I say continuous data processing, okay, so when I say continuous data processing, so it's more of so we are going to uh, run the job at regular intervals. Okay, so continuous data processing at regular uh, intervals. So the regular intervals can be five minutes. So it can be at regular intervals like uh, five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So whatever be the time frame so that we have to repeat uh, the same uh, job. So we can specify the time frame so that uh, it will run at regular intervals for every five minutes. You can schedule the job so that the job will run for every five minutes. Right? Yeah. Okay. So fine then. So the next thing that we need to understand is so in when we are doing this continuous uh, processing, right? So when you do the continuous data processing, so we have been show. So we have a components. We have a set of components, okay, for the continuous flows data processing, okay, for continuous flows data processing. So we have uh, the components which are available in Abin show. So we have continuous flows components, okay. We have continuous uh, flows components available in Abin issue. Okay, we have the continuous flows components available in Abin issue. So we will see those components a bit before that, right? So we will try to see so in continuous data processing, so what could be the source system and what is going to be our target system. So can you tell me what could be the source system for the continuous data processing? So if I want to get the data continuously, so then what are, what what would be the source? Yeah, yeah. Okay, queue. Uh, Correct. Yeah, right. So it is a message queue, right? So it can be a message queue. Yeah. That's right. So what else? I think API. We, we are also having the API calls for this. API, yes, web services API. Web services, yeah. Right. Perfect. There is one more thing. <laughs> you are close. So there is one other source. No, no. I actually, I'm not aware how to create a queue. I know the command, but I never came across or didn't get a chance to work on that. But, no, that's fine. Yeah, no, that's explore fine. somehow. I can explore somehow to, uh, to work. Yeah, yeah. To get, a, to get the idea on this, but never right. get a chance because you do have a uh, license, right? So we didn't get a chance. So you can create a job. You can create a job, but you cannot run the job. <laughs> That's a problem. If you don't have a license, right? So we can create a job. We can make use yeah. of continuous flows components and we can create a job, but we cannot run the job. So for running the job, we would need a license. Yeah. So yeah, so coming back, right? So on the source system, yes, message queue, a web service is called. And there is one another source. So it can be an another source as well. It can be the other source as well. So what would be the other source? Mm. No, how about files? I'm not aware. Huh? Sorry? That's fine. How about files? How about files? So it can be a sequence of files, right? Your source system can play okay. files okay. for every okay. five minutes. Okay. So it can okay. be a sequence of files, right? So files, sequence of files. So in uh, with respect to the target, so we can have the same set of targets. 
So we can write it as a message queue. We can write it as a sequence of file, and we can write it as an API call. So you can just make a call. That. You can just uh, write the data, right? So we can just write the data as well. Right? So we can write the data and sequence of files. Right? So you can create multiple files as well, or you can write it to. Uh, you can write it to a web service uh, API, and then somebody can consume the messages so from the web service by making a call to the web services API. They can get the messages. So that's another uh, thing that we can do. So for now, what we are going to concentrate here is so we are going to concentrate on the uh, messaging queue and the sequence of files. Okay, we are going to concentrate on this messaging queue and the sequence file, sequence of files with respect to the continuous plus component. So this web services we will take it later. <clears throat> okay, this is a will take it later. So for now, we will concentrate on this uh, message queue and the sequence of file. To start with, right? So first, we will try to understand. So what does this message queue uh, signifies? Okay, so and how we are writing the data to the message queue and uh, how the data is stored in the message queue. So message queue is like our uh, it's our regular traditional uh, post office. How the traditional post office works, right? So if somebody sends uh, uh, send, sends a postal card. So the person, the sender will send the postal card to the post office, right? So the post office will give that uh, message, send that message to the destination post office. So from the destination post office, so there will be a courier boy so who will uh, deliver the post to the uh, recipient. That is how it works, correct? So the same way the the message queue will works. Okay, the same way the message queue works. So where, so where you have a sender, so sender sends messages. To the message queue. So once the sender sends a message to the message queue, so in the message queue it keeps the message. It keeps the messages. So then we can read the message from the message queue. Okay, we can read from the MQ. Okay, we can read from MQ and uh, do the processing. So we can do the processing from the messages which are available in the messaging message queue. Okay, we can do the processing. So for this, right? So this sender. So it can be one job, okay. So it, it can be an upstream, okay. So let let's say, so your upstream system, okay. Your upstream uh, source system, your upstream source system can send messages to the message queue. So then what we can do is so, so in admin issue, so in admin issue, so we can develop a process. We can develop a process to. We can develop a process so that will read the data from the message queue and do the processing. Okay, so read the data from the message queue. So I can say here it is an upstream message queue. From the upstream message queue, it reads the data and do the processing. Okay, so is this clear? Any questions at a high level? This is how the message queue works. So do you have any questions with respect to this? No. So when this message queue is of asynchronous communication, okay. So asynchronous, uh, asynchronous. Communication. So when I say asynchronous communication, first we need to understand what is synchronous, right? So, so synchronous communication is something that so we will get an acknowledgement once the message is consumed by the downstream uh, jobs. Okay. So if it is synchronous, <clears throat> if it is synchronous. So does this traditional post office is uh, synchronous or asynchronous communication? That is a synchronous. Yeah. So a recipient, right? So recipient will send acknowledgement. After receiving the message. But uh, your your traditional uh, your message queue, right? So which is which is there are different message queues available with different vendors. So it is more of an asynchronous communication. So you will not get an acknowledgement. Okay. So recipient will not send an acknowledgement after receiving the message. Okay. So there is no acknowledgement. Recipient will not send an acknowledgement. Okay. Okay. But we can make it asynchronous <laughs> if we are not. If it is a traditional way, if it is not uh, able to do, but we can do it. If you want to make it asynchronous, we can do it. So how we can do that? So let's say so you have an upstream uh, MQ. So where you have a uh, initial jobs, 
Ab initio continuous flow job. <coughs> Ab initio continuous flow job. So it reads the data from the message queue. So after it reads the data to the message queue, so maybe what it can do is so we can have another messaging queue. Okay, we can have another message queue. It is more of an acknowledgement message queue. So once the message is received, so Ab initio job should write it to the acknowledgement message queue. So then the upstream system can read this acknowledgement message queue to understand whether the message is delivered to the downstream system. Okay, the upstream system, upstream can get the acknowledgement from the acknowledgement and queue. This clear? Yes. So now, this is more about uh, the basics with respect to the message queue. Okay, so and also we need to understand. So, say for example, uh, so for message queue, so it is more of a message queue server. It's a message queue server and message queue client. It is like our DB only. Okay, so like our database, we have database server where we store the data, right? So, same way, so message queue server is the place where we store the data. So, and in order to interact with the message queue server, so we need a message queue client. So using the client, so we'll connect to this message queue server and uh, read or write the messages. Okay, so read or write the messages uh, to the message queue server from the message queue client. Okay, so the next thing that we need to understand is so this message queue server, so it is more of an application, so it's more on application server. So this will be installed on the application server. So this message queue client, right? So this message queue client will be installed on the run host, right? So for our continuous job to uh, for our continuous job, we get the message from the uh, from the upstream or downstream or write it to the downstream message queue. So we would need a message queue client. Okay, so that is the only requirement. We need an MQ client installed on our uh, run host. So using that MQ client, so we can connect to the upstream or downstream system from our initial. Is this clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now the next thing that we need to understand is so when within the message queue, okay, within the message queue, so you have uh, multiple uh, subscribers. So what do you mean by subscribers? So you can have multiple subscribers like subscriber one, you can have subscriber two, subscriber three. So like this, you can have n number of subscribers. What do you mean by subscribers? Okay, it just read the data uh, from that queue that would I, I know yeah yeah it's more of a channel in more, like more of, yeah more of a channel so we can have multiple uh, multiple uh, subscribers it's more like our broadband say so, yeah, act is a broadband so for act you can have multiple subscribers right so you can yes, have different yes. subscribers for act so the same way so the act will give the same speed to all the subscribers the subscribers can get the same speed just by connecting to the uh, corresponding uh, router and they can get uh, the required speed, right? So the same way. So message to say, for example, if I post a message, say hello world to the uh, message queue. When I say message queue, it is more of for the subscriber. So you are publishing it to the channel called subscriber. So from the subscriber, the downstream system can consume the messages. Okay, so from the subscriber, mm -hmm. the downstream system can consume the messages. So the same message will get posted in all the okay. subscribers. Mm -hmm. Okay, the same message will get posted in all the subscribers. So you will get the same message posted in all the subscribers. All the subscribers will have the same set of message. Yes. Right. Uh, one, one thing I have is like, so for this message queue, do we need to do any configuration at our at the uh, at our run host or? Uh, okay, so it is more of an Abinisha admin activity. Oh. To it's more of we need as uh, the Abinisha okay. admin. Abinisha admin has to set up uh, the configuration related parameters to connect to the same queue uh, client. So in the Abinisha RC, okay, in the Abinisha RC, he has to set up uh, any of the parameters. So it's it's more of an exceptional case, okay. So without setting up okay. any configuration parameters, we can connect. The only requirement is we need a client. That's it. We need an MQ client. Okay. So if we have an MQ client installed by working with the admin, we can install this MQ client. So if we have the MQ client installed, so using the MQ client, we can send the message to the any of the system. So while sending the messages, if there are some exceptional cases which we have to take care, so during that time we can add the configuration parameters. Only then the configuration parameters will come to the picture. Until that, the configuration parameters will not come into the picture. Okay. Right. Yeah. So 
<coughs> so this is more about an overview about the message queue. Okay, so message queue and then subscribers, what type of communication it will run, how to make a how to make it as a synchronous communication. So these basic things that we need to aware. Uh, so before uh, we start with uh, the uh, continuous flows components in the Avenue. Okay. So any questions, uh, uh, Sugas? Do you have any questions? I'm not clear. Okay, now. Oh. Yeah. Okay, fine. So now, uh, let me show you. I think uh, before that, right? Yeah, I think probably we can see that. So then we can uh, discuss the other things. Okay. So the first thing that we need to know is, so we are going to subscribe. So <clears throat> whenever you are read the data, so it's more of reading and writing, right? So read the data from MQ. So we call it as subscribe. So write the data to MQ, so we call it as publish. Okay, that's it. So whenever you are reading the data from the message queue, so we call it as uh, subscribe. Subscribe the data from the MQ. So when you are writing the data to the message queue, so we are calling it as publish the message to the message queue. So for reading and writing, so you have components. So you have components for uh, reading the data from the message queue, which is subscribe and publish. Read For reading the subscribe, for publishing the data to the message queue, we have a published conference available in Abinishu. So it is not only the Abinishu. So the subscribe and publish are used to read and write the data only to the Abinishu specific message queue. So in Abinishu also, so we have the MQ uh, server installed within the run host. On the run host itself, we have the MQ client and server installed. So we can create our own message queue. We can create our own message queue and we can post the messages in one ab initial job so in other ab initial job so we can read the data from the messages we can consume the messages okay so we can make use of third party uh, so this ab initial specific message queue is only only work within the run host correct do you agree with me the ab initial specific message and queue that works only in works only in run host and host or our proxy host <clears throat> so wherever the ab initial cooperating system is installed Install, yeah. yeah, we can do that. So, right. So, but uh, your third party systems will not, uh, there is no need to uh, install the cooperating system for storing the data and the messages, right? So, for that, so we have uh, these third party specific uh, MQ services available. So, okay, so you can take an example of IBM, that's the year MQ service. So, you have uh, DMS, Java, messaging service. So, then you have uh, the RPC, it's a Microsoft product. So Microsoft, uh, Microsoft RPC, Microsoft RPC messaging service. So then you have, yeah, these are these three are the most commonly used uh, messaging services. Okay, these three are the most commonly used messaging queues. So other than this, we have Tipco also. So we can take this Tipco as an example. So Tipco can be used as a uh, Tipco as a middleware. So that can be used for uh, writing the messages and then reading the messages. Okay, so Tipco can also be used. <clears throat> so IBM Epsphere message queue. So it's a messaging service which can be used to buy the source system. Source systems are downstream systems. Okay, source systems are downstream system will make use of these messages messaging queue. Those are uh, target uh, systems. Target systems make use of these message queues. Okay, so make use of these messaging services. So now we need to know how do we read the data from the message queues from all these message queues right so for reading this data from these message queues so there are a few basic things that we have to understand so we will first understand those basic things so then we can discuss uh, on uh, how to uh, do the configuration for those uh, components okay Sub uh, subscribe on the publish component so for that right so, so first we will understand okay so first let's understand so the comp first let's understand the components okay so the, for under for understanding the uh, i think uh, first we will understand so the prerequisites so whatever the things which are required so before uh, we discuss on the continuous flow specific components to start with right so so first thing that we need to understand is a checkpoint and a compute point Okay, so checkpoint and compute point. So this checkpoint is not like uh, the checkpoints that we have in uh, the uh, Abinitio graphs. In the Abinitio graphs graph, we have the checkpoints, phases and checkpoints, right? So, but here it is having a different meaning. So I will tell what is the meaning for it. So first we will understand so what is checkpoint and what is compute point. Okay, the so checkpoint is nothing but <clears throat> a small unit of work. Okay, it's a small unit of work. So which decides how frequently we have to 
retrieve we have to read the data we have to read the data from the message queue so if it is a compute point so how frequently how frequently are we going to write the data how frequently are we going to write the data to the mq okay so for that so we have this checkpoint and compute point so let's say the checkpoint and compute point right so this checkpoint and compute point so, so a checkpoint and compute point okay this checkpoint and compute point so the checkpoint is with respect to reading the data from the message queue it is at a subscriber level right so it is at a subscriber level right so it is at a subscriber level so the compute point is at a uh, publish level right so it is at a publish right while publishing the data so how frequently i have to commit the data to the messaging queue so while reading the data so how frequently i have to read the data from the message queue <clears throat> right so for this right so uh, can we can we say it like this so say for example mm, so for the checkpoint right so uh, can we check it based on the record count so say for example if i if i get five messages okay if i get five messages so then if i get after receiving five messages so start reading the data start reading the data after receiving five messages we can do that right so we can say start reading the data from mq after receiving after receiving after receiving five messages right so after receiving five messages right so after receiving Yeah, after receiving five messages so we can set this right so if this is the case so then your checkpoint and compute point right so checkpoint and compute point is going to be five checkpoint and compute point is going to be five so which means so it takes five five messages it takes five messages from the message queue do the processing and then for every five record it commits the data into the target message queue <clears throat> okay so one is record count based or it can based on time based so you can have a time based also so for every 5 minutes for every 5 minutes for every 5 minutes uh, for every 5 minutes uh, read the data from mq right so read the data from mq so your checkpoint and uh, the compute points are calculated based on the records that is received within the time frame right so checkpoints are computed based on the records received within the time frame is this clear do you have any questions this is very very important checkpoint compute point is very important so how we are going to determine the checkpoint and the compute point so whether it can be a record count based or it can be a time based so is this clear do you have any questions sir uh, sugar